video about shoes ballroom shoes and salsa shoes and all the different dance types of shoes so I'm not in any other dance other than ballroom and salsa is considered a ballroom dance um, it's a Latin rhythm uh, I do I have been in other dances tap and folklorico and jazz and so I have a lot of different dance shoes but so this video is going to be specifically about ballroom. I will talk a little bit about some other types of dance shoes that you can possibly use for ballroom from the other dances if you have anything left over. Um, just to save you some money because the shoes can actually be really expensive. <laughs> okay, the first thing that people ask when they go into the ballroom studio and they start to get serious about their dancing what kind of shoes should I get you know um, and so the, they'll tell you well you'll need practice shoes uh, shoes that you can wear for an hour or two at a time maybe even three hours if you have a lesson and a couple of classes in ballroom so um, practice shoes, you can use different kinds. There's kinds that are flat, the kind with heels, the strappy kind. You can use a basic salsa shoe um, for practice shoes. You can use a jazz shoe or a jazz sneaker for ballroom practice. Any really dance shoe that's comfortable for you, you can wear. I wouldn't suggest tennis shoes. So when you're first starting out, you don't really, for the first couple months of dance, you can get away with wearing tennis shoes. But the more you do it, you'll find that the more advanced moves that you get into, the turns and the twists and everything are going to be easier with suede. Suede, suede is what's on the bottom of a dance, a ballroom dance shoe, so that it's easier to dance on the wooden floors. And, um... So I'll show you um, my shoes. Oh. This is my great big dance bag. And you can see it's packed and full. What do I have in here? I have these jazz shoes. For karate. I like to call them karate shoes. You can wear them for um, martial arts as well. Um, they have no suede. There's no suede on these shoes. It's just that leather stuff. So if you don't have... If you don't like leather, there are places you could get like fake leather dance shoes at Target. They have ballet shoes um, and jazz shoes. I know that they do it tap. They even sell tap. I've seen it there. If they don't have it in the store, they have it online. So you can get them at Capizio's. There's plenty of website discount dots. Lots of different websites to get shoes, but they'll sell these too. I got these. They're probably, I don't want to say my age, but they're probably like 30 years old. Well, let me see. They're my size, so I had to at least have been a teenager. So I'll say like 20, 25 years old. These are old and they still work. The bottom is not really that messed up. I don't wear them outside. Never, ever, ever wear your dance shoes outside. Okay, always take. A shoe bag with you. Shoe bags look like this. They're just for your shoes. This one I got online on Amazon. These shoes were my first. Actually, these are my new ones. These were my first um, ballroom shoes, and they're so messed up on the bottom. So, but they're more flexible. This is what a ballroom shoe is capable of, okay? 
so that flex is what you're trying to get this is my very basic practice shoe now when i first got this i considered a competition shoe because of the color and um I don't know. I thought it was for competition, and it is. A lot of people use this. It's from Very Fine. This is a very fine shoe. And I wasn't using the shoe protectors, the heel protectors. So when you don't, I can't even take them off now. I've been using them for so long, I can't even take them off. But the heel is so worn out because I didn't wear heel protectors for the first year. And um, now they're totally worn in and my most comfortable shoe, this is my most comfortable shoe. You'll find that after a year, your shoes will fit perfectly. But then you'll be looking for new ones just in case you damage these or whatever. With a lot of shoes online, you will um, get a either heel protectors or you'll get a shoe brush so this is my shoe brush it didn't come with these, sh these particular shoes um but this is what shoe brushes look like so they're just wooden this is a good quality shoe brush and it takes off all this stuff so let's show you what it does use a basic one you want to go in the same direction and you just go the opposite so it goes like this and you want to go the, like that so this is what it kind of opens up all those things on the bottom of your shoe and it makes it easier this is actually a bad idea because I'm at the table but, um, <laughs> edit. <laughs> I've practiced clothes in here. Um, I keep plastic bags for wet, sweaty clothes. Um, I'm probably one of the only people that sweats that much, um, especially in the summer. There's people that just don't have sweat glands. Like my teacher Wesley doesn't have doesn't seem to have sweat glands. He only sweats when it's like a hundred degrees. Um, but these are my new ones. I got these because I might need new practice shoes. And the reason why they're practice shoes for me now is that they're only two and a half inches, two point five inches, and I don't have the heel protectors on my new ones and trying to wear them in. And um, they're still flexible at the beginning. But this is what the bottom looks like right now and what I do because I have a wide foot so these are just good for practice actually in competition I'm going to get another shoe it's going to be three inches and it's really better if you have a weird foot a fat foot a skinny foot something a little bit that doesn't really fit in regular shoes very well you want to get custom shoes and those can cost $90 and up depending on where you go and what kind of shoe you're looking for. These shoes only cost me like $60, $70 um, and they came with shoe protectors but not the brush. The brush was $7 so it's not that expensive but my teacher when I first or one of the teachers that worked there um, when I first walked in, I, I think I asked about shoes three dozen million times and my mom was there and she asked about shoes and I asked about shoes and we kept asking about shoes. Before I got shoes, it had been like six months. I should get shoes. I should get shoes. <laughs> I should get shoes. And I didn't get them until later because I didn't know enough and um, I didn't want to waste all my money on shoes, you know, so I don't have black regular practice shoots. For me, I do a lot of Latin rhythms, so I practice in Latin rhythm shoots. Um, if I were a teacher, or if I did a lot of um, other dances like smooth dances, I would get a regular black practice shoe with a shorter, chunkier heel. Um, I suggest those to anybody who has not used to um, 
dancing a lot or wearing a lot of heels, wearing heels for a long period of time. Children start with flats to a small like inch heel and as they get progress more in dance they go up to like a two and a half heel I wouldn't suggest a three inch heel until you're already in your high teens or your 20s and um, you really need the practice in a shorter chunkier heel with something that goes all the way around the ankle like this that ties tied around your ankle not the ones that start from here, but the ones that go around here, really holding your ankle um, so you don't twist it. Um, part of what happens in Latin rhythm, there's a lot of twisting, turning, uh, swiveling, and um, kicking, and you want to be stable. So for practice, these are really good shoes. I've had them for a long, long time. I even competed in them but I need to have a higher heel now. <laughs> and not, it's funny because I'm just getting older. You think I'd just be getting a lower heel, but I feel like it looks better. It feels better. The everything, my turns are tighter. My legs look longer. My point is better in a higher heel. And in salsa, the, the, back movement so if you go forward back when you go back it's easier to push off of a higher heel that's my personal opinion that's why I want them so I'm gonna be getting those custom it's just the Capizios has been closed a lot since quarantine but those are the basics for beginners and even intermediate dancers for shoes don't forget to get a shoe brush Um, I have folklore 
Michael shoes. Now here's the advice I was going to tell you if you have other dance shoes. Um, dance sneakers, jazz shoes that have suede. I've seen people come in with a ballet flippers um, without the point, obviously. And they work. Whatever works, there's the socks that look like a shoe on the bottom. Those work. Part of the problem with those is that you're you're gonna get stepped on. A lot of the men don't purchase shoes for long periods of time. If you're dancing in the classes, I don't know if locally where you are, that your studio is still doing classes, but when they do, if you have a partner, they're gonna step on your foot. So it's really better to have like a real shoe than that stop, stop slipper thing. It's really better to have a shoe and wear some sort of protection on your toes, like a sock or stocking. It's not a lot, the stockings and the nylons. It's not a lot, but it's sort of just that added um, tight compression so that um, you don't get hurt. I don't know. Everything extra is good. So. That's my advice for shoes. If you've been in Ballet Folklorico, the, sh- the beginner shoes and ballroom are almost the same. You can get a really chunky heel, like a theatrical shoe. Um, works for um, smooth dances, but if you're getting into salsa, cha-cha, rumba, you want something with an open toe. So smooth shoes have a closed toe, and Latin rhythm shoes have an open toe. And you can get them strappy, you can have them cover the top. There's so many styles and so many websites and so many shoes. Um, This style is not really that important, I think, in salsa competitions and um, like intermediate and under ballroom competitions. They advise you to wear a nude colored, copper colored. Um, whatever looks better on your skin tone um, shoe instead of black because the black is a little bit more striking it's going to grab your eye t- towards the foot and if you're not really a dance dancer and you don't really have a great turnout or you miss steps every now and again but you're able to sort of get back in like um, recover if that happens to you a lot and that happens a lot in intermediate beginners and intermediate level, um, you don't want the focus on your feet. You want the focus more on your technique, right? And um, for a lot of people in the beginning who didn't take dance as a child, say you're my age, and you're starting dance, you may not have a turnout naturally. Um, so for if you decide to enter a competition, at whatever level you're at. Beginners have competitions too. You can compete at, as a newcomer. And um, so if you want to do that, the focus should not be on your feet. They will tell you that. If they don't tell you that, then they're setting you up to lose. <laughs> so you have a better chance if you have a gold shoe. Um, that's why I got these and I went to the salsa competition. Everybody in that competition had gold shoes. Of course, I was entering an amateur. I was an amateur, so every amateur had gold shoes. And the professionals had a little bit more stylish shoes. So that's kind of the way it works. Um, to get a more stylish shoe, you're basically saying, I know what I'm doing. But for men, you can wear this the shoe thing is the same um but i think that most my teacher in his same sex competition he wore black like practice shoes with the big chunk heel um it's a lot of practice to get into those heels even for a professional but they won first place in those shoes by the way just regular black shoes. I think his partner has really fancy, the really fancy, like, um, um, what do you call it? The, um, 
shiny, the really shiny black shoes. I've seen his shoes before and they're fancy. Um, so, but girls can wear their shoes too. Some of them are unisex, but you can get men, they will just tell you your size in men's or um, some sites sell the same style for women. It just depends on where you go, but you can get really nice shoes um, in all different styles um, for both men and women. And like, I really liked a the black practice shoes, these pair of shoes that I saw on a website. So I asked the website, I emailed them and I asked them, hey, um, do you sell these in women's sizes? And they said, well, what size are you in women's? So I responded back with my shoe size. And, and they said that would be a size such as, I forgot, this is like a size four or five in men's. You could wear the same shoe, is what they said. And so it's not just to sell you, just to sell you a shoe. You can wear the shoes. They're comfortable and they're made uh, to dance in. And dance shoes just in general are a little bit narrower. So that's why I suggest to people with wider feet to get them custom made because the regular dance shoes are a little bit narrower. That's why if you ask to wear a men's shoe, they're gonna be like, it's fine. <laughs> because <laughs> it'll fit a regular foot um but they they do they are probably a little bit more comfortable maybe a little bit wider i haven't i didn't actually buy them so i don't really i can't really tell you um but as far as money goes for a basic practice shoe you don't have to spend a lot you can just get theatrical shoes and wear them to class as long as you're not in competition whatever your feet likes if your feet doesn't like them don't wear them i have so many cuts and um bruises like scars from these shoes these shoes that i showed you that are not my favorite shoes um the first couple months that i wore them they were digging and they were digging so when i got these new shoes i spent about 15 minutes a day about for like two weeks just pulling and pulling, pulling them apart in my sensitive areas where my foot, where it digs on my foot. And you can do other things um, to them to make them softer on the toe part if you have weird, I have like weird toe issues, but um, I just pull them and they stretch. The thing about these shoes is that they stretch this I got the kind of this that holds your toe in a little bit better these strappy things because of my particular toe issue my toe falls through these things so I have to get the kind with the mesh if you have the same little toe problem that I have the mesh really helps to keep them in but they're tighter they're way tighter they still stretch so you can stretch them and don't worry, they won't break unless you stretch from here. If you stretch like this, they'll probably break. But you want to stretch like, like from the middle here. And they will stretch out just like as if you wore them. So if you stretch them for 15 minutes a day over a two week period, it's like you've been wearing them for a couple of days, right? And you can get shoe stretchers if you have a shoe stretcher you can try it but i asked a lot of people about shoe stretchers and they said that it could do it too much you might you might do it too much and then it really just won't fit <laughs> anymore and you'll just you'll hate it so it's up to you try new things and stretching your shoes don't spend too much money but i would say i've had shoes that were only 30 dollars and they were ridiculously uncomfortable. They looked cute. I wore them for like an hour and that was it. I couldn't, I couldn't keep them on and the next time I wore them it hurt really bad. So I would suggest spending like very fine. It's probably the cheapest brand I would buy in ballroom shoes. Um, there's some other comparable brands to very fine that are in the same price range and I've seen other people wear them. So check that out on Amazon 
I wouldn't spend any less than $60. I know it's a lot of money, but... As far as Pocorico shoes, I was just gonna say, it's the same thing. If you like Pocorico shoes, me personally, personally Mexican ballet Pocorico, um, traditional Mexican dancing, you know, the dresses. The shoes have nails in them. So you can't wear those nails to the dance studio. But if you have your favorite shoemaker and you can get the shoes without nails, you can practice in those. If you're just used to that shoe and you want to take a ballroom, you could get a sh one of those shoes. Because I know when I got my Focorico shoes, they were only $60. That was a long time ago. I don't know if they raised the price. But I think that without the nails, they're cheaper. So if that's a comfortable shoe for you, um, just use those. If you happen to have a pair without nails, just use those. It works um, because they've got that smoother bottom. And I don't have, I'll try to add a picture right here for you um, of suede. You can buy suede. Um, if you have nails on the bottom of your shoe or whatever, I don't suggest taps. But for things like theatrical shoes and um, even your tennis shoes or nice dress shoes, a pair of heels that are really comfortable for you. You can dance in them, but they're not really ballroom. So you can go and get this suede stuff from Amazon, cut it out and put it on the bottom of your shoe. But you um, don't have to do the heel. It's better if you do do the heel, if you have a chunkier heel, but you don't have to do the heel. The suede is mainly for your toes, so you can slip and slide and turn and stuff like that. But however, if you have nails on the body of your shoe, you want to put, you want to put it on the heels. Um, yeah, because the studio owners will get really upset with you if you take nails into their wooden floors. So, uh, but seriously, my bottle of recording shoes were probably the most comfortable things I've ever had. And I just wish I had them without nails. Um, so I could use them for this. <laughs> um, let's see. Any other types of dance shoes? If you know any other types of dance shoes or have a question about something else in the shoe department, um, as far as ballroom, um, leave me a comment below. I'll try to get back to you. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's been informative for you. And um, I have much more information to come in the future for beginners and intermediates and ballroom dance. Um, and I appreciate you following and watching. Um, so if you could, there are some links below to the Babble Reel on Instagram and Facebook. You can follow me. Or you can follow Wesley or just the web page itself. Um, you can subscribe to us. In fact, if you really, really like this video and the content that we provide for you, because it's only going to get better, but we cannot do it if we have nobody to do it for. So please subscribe right there. Which art is going to be right here? Subscribe button is so. Thank you once again for watching, for subscribing. I will see you later. Bye-bye.